when I first started skating, seeing pictures of guys flying out of pools <clears throat> was was what got me fired up on wanting to go to the skate park for the first time. And at that point, if you skated and you didn't skate pools, all you did was freestyle handstands, 360s, and that stuff just seemed like ice skating to me. I wanted to fly. And then I went to the skate park the first time and saw guys, you know, guys that were okay. What but, skate park? Uh, Oasis. And then I saw guys flying around and I, and that was it. I was like, that's what I want to do. I'm going to come here as much as I can and I'm going to learn how to do that. And I was super small at the time. How old were you then? Uh, 10. And I looked like I was seven. <laughs> and then uh, once I started learning to skate pools, then I was just looking at the guys that were the most innovative that I thought, you know, so. There were a couple of like local pros at Oasis, guys like Dave Andrecht and Steve Cathy. And, I, you know, I loved watching them live and I thought they were really good. So they were like hometown heroes. But um, the guys that I was really looking at were uh, Eddie Alguera and Cap, because uh, Steve Caballero was just coming up as an amateur at the time. And I would see pictures of him like going, you know, three or four feet out of Winchester. And he looked as small as I did. And I was like, that's what I'm aspiring to because I see a little guy doing that and I want to do did that. Did you know Stevie then? Did you talk to him in any way? No, I mean, no. he was just just a guy in a magazine. I mean, I knew who he was, and he had already, you know, he was establishing himself. Um, but those guys generally didn't come to Oasis. Um, in fact, there was one pro contest at Oasis that all those guys came to, and my parents, uh, we had to go out of town that weekend. I'll never forget, like, I was, I never, ever uh, forgave my dad for it. Because I knew all those guys that I wanted to see in person were going to be there, and it's just something he said we could get out of. <laughs> I take I, I take influences from from uh, I don't know everywhere now. I mean, I, I just watch what's happening, and it's it's awesome to see. When you, you know, you're looking at stuff that's happening like on Mega Ramp, or you're looking at um, a guy like you know Ben Hatchell, who's got this amazing pool uh, experience, but he's taking the street stuff and he's he's mixing it in, and and that's always what I was trying to do. Like I was literally trying to do freestyle tricks on vert you know that's that was my go-to like i learned finger flip airs because i was watching rodney and it's like i gotta do that in the air like i got more time uh, you know the stuff that the bob is doing and, and the stuff that uh, uh like there's so much creativity in street too i love it you know i love that that it's they're mixing old with new you know i love all that stuff how it's just it's really melt it's, it's molding all these styles together uh i'd say uh tony alva um, Rodney Mullen. To me, like, in terms of, of the the trick and difficulty influence, I'd have to, like, a tie for me is between Cab and Eddie Alguera. Um, and obviously, Cab has had the more successful career and is more well known, but, um, you know, they were, they were right on par for a while, like, doing the same types of tricks. And, I was right there as a little kid watching it and wanting to emulate all of it. Definitely the same goes for, like, in terms of my eyes, Bob Merkwitz, Danny Way, you know, just innovating and, and taking what we thought was the limit of height and spinning and stuff and, and taking it to a whole new level. Um, and uh, Mark Gonzalez. Cool. I just, I'd been in skating for so long that uh, I was never trying to covet it. You know what I mean? I always thought that there should be a bigger audience for it. I thought that more people should appreciate it. I never understood why they didn't. And so, uh, when, um, I don't know, when I, when I had the opportunity to get bigger endorsements, so to speak, uh, my only concern was having final approval and having control over what they were doing, and, you know, in terms of how they present skateboarding. Yeah. Um, and no one else really had that, not that they didn't have the luxury, but they didn't have the um, the opportunity or the desire um, because most of the guys that were you know in the in the position to do that kind of thing maybe had just sort of just started being successful I'd already had a wave of success in the 80s and, and yeah. I've seen it come and go and I've seen the people that do it with a passion but don't get compensated for it um, and uh, I, I was happy to you know, use McDonald's marketing dollars to bring more people into skating. Cool.